All right, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome back to week three of our tutorial in CS 10.10e. Today we'll be learning about functions, if else statements, and repetitions. Now, today uh, we'll be using a lot of platforms. We'll be using uh, Google Colab. Uh, we'll be using CodeShare. There's a lot of, there's live coding today. There's also a, a group discussion. There's also poll everywhere. So just like, Please help me out, lah. Please, uh, again, uh, you guys don't. Uh, this is a way for you guys to participate. I mean, there's no participation marks, but if you participate, you guys can indulge more in the content. So, um, yeah, I'll just share this part first. So, what I just shared is a Google Collab notebook, uh, which you can open, and basically, this is the materials for this week's tutorial, lah. So basically what you can do is just basically um, try to connect, try to run the code, make sure that you just press run anyway. And then it takes time to run. And then basically you can start running code. Lah. Okay. So in this case, uh, in Google Colab, the turtle package is slightly different. It's Colab turtle which is suited for Google Colab like, instead of like normal Python. It's no different with, uh, there's a little difference with the normal Python turtle, but adjustments has been made so that you guys can also run codes here. So for today's tutorial, feel free to use this uh, notebook to actually do the coding exercises in class. But if you don't, uh, feel free to use your own Python console or Python IDLE to run your own code. You can, uh, today we'll be discussing about today's worksheet, which is, today we'll be talking about drawing turtles, and then like, doing some stupid if-else thing. And then we'll talk about the three types of loops and repetitions in lecture. And then we'll talk about burgers, burgers, all right? So for the first part, we'll be talking about turtle and functions. Okay, cool. So I hope everyone is ready. So we'll start talking about function. So this is how a function looks like, uh, where we have the defined keyword over here, and then the function name, and then the input or argument, in which a function does not necessarily have to be have an input or argument. Then basically an indentation to indicate that this is a part of the function, and then an output which is indicated right after the word return, which is basically the return statement lah. And I think one thing to emphasize, one thing that I want to mention here is that uh, it is not compulsory for a function to have a return statement. Okay. So, um, so let's say I want to draw this triangle over here, right? Which uh, basically this is the cola over here. Uh, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, right. It will draw me this triangle. But what if I want to draw it again, lah? It's tr too troublesome to type the above lines again and again. I mean, you kind of get where I'm going over here. Basically, what we want to do is basically store our code into a function. Why we store it as a function? Because uh, when we store it as a function, right, it will serve as some sort of a uh, template. So in this case, we kind of have a template that whenever we call draw triangle, right, it will always create, uh, whenever I call this function, right, it will always create a triangle. Or you can just directly put it into the file over here. Now, this template over here is not very flexible, if you can see, right? What if I want to draw a triangle with the size of 200, or say 100, or 50, or 1000, or whatever? So, put the input should, value, just directly insert the the draw target and put and then put all and put all the all the param parameters onto the uh, whatever parameters you just insert. Correct. So basically, what you want to do is just basically uh do a oops oh sorry sorry you just basically want to create a input parameter that can where you can actually adjust the length like this. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, like this. So this is very important where you can actually capture common patterns uh, inside your function, in which I have actually written it over here. Now, using this, right, using this uh, uh, 
template over here, we can actually create the uh, triangle over here. Okay, there's a question. We can actually create a triangle over, like this. So that, uh, by actually changing the size of the triangle, lah. as you can see, if I change the size, draw triangle 100, 200, 300, 400, it will actually draw it. To see it being visualized, it's like this. Okay, uh, Xie Yang asks, what is the difference between putting a draw try and without it? Um, basically, what? It's just uh, to store your code inside the function because uh, this one right it means that you can actually reuse it multiple times in this case like this you can reuse it multiple times does it answer your question see young uh, because normally i didn't put the draw triangle in in the code i just when i type the code then i open the button shell then i i type uh print the draw triangle then the outcome will come so it's slightly different with the yours. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, like, indeed, it wasn't taught in the first lecture, but it is something that we introduced to you guys, uh, uh, writing functions. It's okay. It's okay. Perfectly fine. But you kind of see the purpose, right? You kind of can reuse the code over here to create this design over here. Oh, okay. So that's the point. Uh, like, you want to create a template where you can reuse it and modify it. So in this case, you can draw tri triangles of different sizes and use it to create other designs as well. So okay. with that, you can also use that to create this triangle also. So to create this triangle, what you can do is, um, perhaps you can call it draw try, say I want 100, and do a rotate of 60 degrees, and then do another draw try. And then do another rotate 60 degrees and then do another draw try and i think this should works let's see let's see if it works so it, there you go all right oops uh, apparently it doesn't work oh okay i think it's not 60 one, two, three. Or, uh, wait, that, do it, does it need to rotate? Okay, RT, let's see. Let's see if I got it right this time. Basically, uh, let's see. Oh, it's still the same. Um, what's the degree? Uh, 60, 90. Is it 120 degree? Let's see. Let us see. I'm not so sure. I'm, I mean, I'm not the G, most, the smartest in math. Uh, Alright, it looks good. It's, it's 120. La. Okay. So it looks perfect. Okay. So that's actually that actually answers your first two questions. Uh. Draw the following figures in Python Turtle. I think there's also another way of uh, right, uh, of coding the second part, which is this one. Uh. Oh yeah, same 120. Okay. There's another way, uh. I think like some some people would also do it like by um, going this way, and then this way, and then going this way, this way. This way, this way, and then finally back to the initial point. Uh, we start at this particular point over here. Going, going here. There's another one that is, does it that way. So I think after seeing that pattern over there, right? After seeing this pattern, um, oops. Now the challenge is uh, create. Uh, creating uh, more complex designs. Uh, I think you see this in your notebook. Basically, try to create these more complex designs. Uh. Like, uh, if you, for this one, right, if you don't want to write a function, if you don't want to write dev, but full, 
and then write it below. If you want to write it this way and then call it, it's okay. If you do not want to write the function and just like, like say like do it like forward 100 left 60, that's also perfectly fine. So yeah, um, this is where the live coding part is. Uh, I'll give you 10 minutes to do this. Uh, to do this design, I'll leave this design on. Uh, meanwhile, I have prepared this code share. Um, so for this code share, right, um, um, basically this is a platform where you can share your code. Just make sure that, uh, just make sure that uh, once you're done, just copy your code over here so that we can discuss together. I'll share the link to, for the code share in the Zoom chat, okay? So once you're done, uh, just cop copy this, uh, write your name and basically your code here and then just like do this bar. Basically that's to limit between people's, other people's code. Lah. Okay. Um, I'll give you 10 minutes. So like by 12, 24, uh, finish or not, we'll try to just like discuss lah, how to come up with these designs. Looks good. Okay, uh, I cannot just like, I, I don't think I can go through all your answers, but I'll just like skim through. Um, so, say, okay, I see you're still typing IND. Okay, we have Oliver's code over here. He has draw triangle. I assume pattern one is the first triangle. Okay, let's just cop, uh, copy over his code and try it out. So, uh, mine is wrong. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, it's okay. Okay, uh, I think I'll need to fix the indentation for a while. Okay, uh, I'm in that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is Oliver's code. Okay, it looks well. All right, I know that was a bit slow, but uh, well done. So if you can see, right, the logic here is that he sees this as each as one part. Oh, press my pen. Each here as one part, one part, one part. And he basically recycles the code earlier from this part and basically just repeats it here and here, which is, which is a one way to do it, which is good. Well done. Uh, let's see if there are any other answers that uh, has a different logic, I wonder. Draw, try and try. Oh, okay, I'm not so sure what that means. Um, yo guys, I strongly recommend next time, right? Yeah, get, uh, use a better, uh, give a good name la, for function. Okay. I think most of you actually did, did it the same way, I think. I think, um, I'm not so sure, but is, uh, this has, is there any one of you that actually sees this instead of as like three separate triangles, but actually you guys see this as like one small part, another, Another and another of this. And, and I'm not sure where I see like this. I think I I think it one triangle, one size, one one. I see the pattern already. Is let me think. I remember I see this is you draw. If you never change angle, you just draw. You just draw, draw the same. Mm. You just draw a bigger, bigger. This is what I think lah. You yeah. see the pattern. All right. Because this one, I think, is also, uh, if you guys can actually think of that way, right? That, that one is more useful when you deal with the second triangle, actually. Because if you see, if you, if you see, right, uh, yeah, 
if you see this one, right, this one is actually the same triangle as this one. It's just that this particular tri this particular line right over here, is just basically shifted over. It's just shifted over here. Yeah. See? That's why I, I put I will put six triangle, three and six triangle. Then mm -hmm. when this when it's an is it it's an even number, then I just my method is just even numbers. Check where it's even, then you swap. Yeah. So I'll just re Oh okay. even. So I'll just reuse my code over here, la, who, but this time I can actually adjust the length. So full uh, length. And then basically I'll call full, <coughs> full 50, full 100 and full 150. Okay, for those of you who want to do a for loop on this, right, feel free. Now you guys can do a repetition on this. So if I do this right, it will give me a triangle. It will give me the small part first. Right. Okay, it's a bit slow, but be patient. And then it will give me the bigger one. Okay, it's a bit slow. And then finally, it draws the biggest part. So with this, if I want to do this part, right, this code over here, I just need to make a little modification. Basically, same code over here. But then I would add a rotate, lah. like left rotate 60. I think, I think it's 60. Lah. I think 60 works. Let's see if it works or not. All right, it does work. So yeah, I mean, uh, when you create a for loop or write, writing this, right, it's, it's just like, it's all about extracting patterns, seeing the patterns, is seeing the bigger picture. Is there anything that's similar? So it's very, I think, for those of you who actually wrote it the long way, like I think some of you wrote it this way. Um, the Ivan also did it this way. It's perfectly fine. It's actually, it's perfectly fine to start with this way. But then after you write it this long, right, it is very important for you to just like extract the patterns out. Which one is similar and which one that can be repeated by a for loop, by a function, etc. So if you can see like this is just like building on each other, like from full, it builds on triangle. And from triangle over here at draw try, where's my draw try? My draw try here, you can kind of like shorten this into a for loop. Like uh, for in range three times because your triangle has three sides, then you repeat this three times, and then basically it's done. This one is also can. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, I think we're done about uh, turtles. Um, I hope it's it gives you more clarity of what function does that it, you can actually reuse functions over and over again, and for loops, you can extract patterns out. Um, are there any questions so far for Turtle? I think after this, right, right you can actually do assignment two already. Is everyone okay? If everyone's okay, give me a thumbs up, perhaps. Um, so like when the private test field, usually it's what kind of condition? Usually private, right? It's usually those very edge cases, la, like you know, like some it's a very edge one, la, like there are cases that you don't think of, but you just fail. La. Just remember, like you need to you your your goal in coding, right? Mm -hmm. Your goal in coding is not to um satisfy the condition of the public test case, but you need to satisfy the conditions of the question of the uh, assignment meaning that when the assignment does not specify anything right then you need to be to ensure that your code should be able to take in general inputs general inputs as in put anything also can or yeah put anything also can for example i think there was an example uh, I, 
I, I cannot pull it out immediately, like it takes time. But there was this example where um if you do like the practice question, there was this example where different languages will give different different inputs. It give gives different outputs. So like if you pick the language Klingon, like your name will be reversed, etc. etc. So for that one, right, you cannot hard code the names, like you need to in, take in any name. And then basically for every every single name available, right, you can give the output. If that makes sense. I don't think it does, but yeah. So basically my code has to be able to use for all the languages uh, in a way. Yeah, correct. It should be general. Okay, okay. Andy asked uh, your question, right, regarding can you explain the second pattern? Uh sure. So Okay, so the second pattern over here is basically the same one, but then you need to, um, every time you go to the next triangle, right, every time, so for the second one, right, the easiest way is actually to imagine this as a composition of smaller, I say toxic triangles, these are toxic triangles, like the triangles that you see in um, toxic wastes, but uh, uh, but every time you create a new toxic triangle, right, you need to rotate it so that um, instead of it building again here, but it actually got rotated to here. It, it got rotated here, so it starts here and creates a, light, a triangle here. And then it will continue to creating a triangle and then continue drawing a triangle. So yeah, as you can see, this one is basically this, uh, the lines here. But um, it is moved here. It's just like a 60 degree rotation. It's moved. I hope that answers your uh, uh, question. I mean, that's the best way that I can explain. Lah. I, I cannot explain it better. Basically, it's the same one, but basically you just add a rotation every time you create a new toxic triangle. All right. All right. I think we're done with turtle and we're kind of running out of time, so I'll be starting to rush. So next part is that... Uh, the difference between print and return. I think this one is a quite a contentious issue. So, um, yeah, I think uh, print and return is quite obvious. Not quite obvious. I think uh, I'll just pull out the slides first uh, for better explanation. So, yeah, if you remember, right, uh, in Python, this one actually. Uh, echoes a return value while some code does not echo because it doesn't have a return value except for example an assignment uh, operator where you assign a code into a variable it will not, it will not have any return value so we have two functions square and say three times where square has the return value and the function say three times does not have a return value however it because it does not have a return value, it will by default returns none. Which uh, I think we touched before, none is just like empty, it's nothing. Right. Now we, when we run this, right, um, when we run say three times, it actually still gives us something. But uh, that something is not the return value. It's not an echo, la, but it's just a print statement. It, just, it comes out from the print. So if you try to print, right, say three times, right, it actually gives us a none here. Because like the hello here comes from running the function itself. It runs this function and gives us this. But when it tries to run this, right, it gives us none. The square here, right, when it runs square, it, nothing happens. But when you print it, it will return nine. So, for example, we can see in this case, in this uh, Python notebook, we have this def square over here, where we call it, it will give us 9, and this one, when we call say 3 times, it will cause alama. 
But the difference can be seen when we try to assign them to a variable. Where square, right, when you try to run square and assign it, there's nothing happening. Just if you can see in square, right, nothing actually happens right, inside the function. It just returns uh, the square of x, which is immediately stored as in y. That's why when you print y, it actually gives you a value. But when you do this, right, say three times and assign it to z, like running this uh, code alone will immediately run, execute this three lines of code. So that's why when you run this, right, as an immediately this is printed. But then when you, z has nothing. Lah. That's why when you print z, it just gives you none. Okay. Uh, so that's the difference about return and print. Are there any questions? If there are no questions, give me a thumbs up. Why, why so different? Is it because z get nothing because there's no return value for the say three times? Correct. There's no return value. You still you still print by. You will not return any value. Yes, yes. So like uh, this will not give you any value lah. Will give, not give you anything in return. So you see the haya and alama over here, right? It's not a result of the return value, but it is a result of the command inside the function. So you kind of can do the same thing lah, over here. Like, uh, I copy it here. And like this here is like print x, x, x. Right, uh, run it here. C3339. And then when I run square here, right, it will give me like 555 five, five over here. The 555 five, five over here and the uh, higher over here, right, is, is the result of executing code 2, 3, and 4, but not the return value. Then when I print Y, right, it will just give me 25, which is the actual return value. Oh, I see. Thank you. All right. <laughs> if not, uh, thumbs up, everyone. Wait, can you go to the Z part again? Okay. Yes, I've gone to Z here. How can I help you, Nicholas? Oh, it was it Vachel? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, how can I explain it again? Oh, then shouldn't the you say that they shouldn't the Z print the higher three times no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is printed higher three times when it is executed, which is executed during the assignment here at this particular part. Hmm. Once. Once you are already here, right, it's, it, the code has been executed as well in here, right? It's not, the higher is printed here instead of in this part over here. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's a bit tricky, la, but um, now you understand. So aside from your assignment to check each uh, assignment, right? Uh, you are expected to use the return statement whenever you are asked to create a function that returns something. You are expected to use this instead of this kind of thing, sprint. The check each thing is actually a very, it's an exception. Lah. That's an exception, a question that we don't usually use. But mostly when you are asked to define a function, right, you are expected to have a return value. Lah. Okay? But again, as I mentioned earlier, a uh, return value is not compulsory for a function. All right, uh, next we'll be doing selection statements. So we can, if you can see here, we have four unique selection statements that I hope you don't run first because we're gonna do like a very easy poll everywhere. So if you guys are, uh, just pull out your phone and let's do this. Uh. So there are four questions. Oh, damn it, I forgot to fix the poll everywhere. Let me fix it first. <laughs> there was a mistake. Uh, So just like go to, uh, okay, let me just do a quick uh, error message. All right, it should be okay by now.
So yeah, uh, just respond at OEV with this Aaron 417. If you guys are done, just give me a thumbs up so I know that you guys are, it's okay. I'm so sure why it's like this. Okay lah. Screw this. Okay, if everyone is okay, we'll just start. Okay, okay, this is wrong. Wait lah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I think there's something wrong with it. Let me just refresh first. Huh? I think there's something wrong. Can you send the link? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can, can, can. Uh, just give me a moment. I hope I type that right. Okay. Alright, is everyone in? I hope everyone is in. We'll do some learning here. Remember, the leaderboard doesn't matter. Just do your best and let's just enjoy it. Okay, so the first question. <laughs> yeah, don't be competitive. So what will it print? You have 30 seconds, 30 seconds. So take your time to think. Ten seconds. All right, time's up. Okay, so the answer is uh, two. Yes, the answer is two. Eighty percent of you got it right. So again, why is it? Um, oh wait, my bad. Uh, why is it two? Hey. Um, I think we valid here first because this is true, right? Then we will run the code entire code here. It's a pass, and then basically we'll run this box. We'll, we'll go to see this box here first. Because this is false, right? We will not execute the code over here, as we will execute the code in else. Okay? Is everyone clear? Wait, say again. <laughs> okay. So we have this function. We, we valid this statement over here, right? True. Mm. Because it's true, then it means that everything under it will be run. We'll run the code under it. Yep. Then basically, there's another if else statement. It's, it's a branch. Lah. We'll run this part. Because uh, it's, uh, it's false, uh, we will skip this part. This part will be skipped. And then uh, basically, it leaves us with else. And when what happens with else is that because it's else, basically, We'll run everything inside else. That's it will give us two. Okay. I think uh, more examples will give you more clarity. So, uh, next question. Uh, we have the leaderboard here. Okay. Not bad. So, the next question is, what will it return? 30 seconds. Ten seconds. All right, ten seconds is up. Now revealing the answer. The answer is two again. The answer is two again. Seventy-five percent of you got it right. So if you uh, see this, uh, okay. Uh, you can see that there is, it is a branch lah, like this. This is a branch over here. So, we valid the first statement, if false, because it is valid as false, right? It means like the entire part over here will be skipped. This branch will be skipped. Moving on to the next branch, which is else. 
because it's an else statement, right? Because so regardless of whatever happened, it will be run. Hence, else return to this code over here will be run. Will be executed. Yes, will be executed. Is it clear? All right. The next part is more interesting. I think the next part really shows you how if else works. Leaderboard, not bad. Okay. So what this, what will this chunk of code return? Oh, wait, what? Ah. Can you vote? Can what? you vote? All right, please vote. Because the timer is missing. I don't know what happened. I'm not so sure how many times left you have, but yeah, the timer is missing. Yeah, I'm not so sure what's going on, but I'll just leave it like 10 more seconds perhaps. Okay, uh, all right, we'll close the vote. Okay, I know not all of you are participating, but okay, like, I hope you guys learn, uh, learn something. So the answer is three. Yay. Yay. So 64% of you got it right. Um, please don't change again. I'm not so sure why you picked three. Uh, some of you error or none, but let's trace. So here we actually have five branches. We'll evaluate one by one. Because this is false, uh, we'll skip. Again, false, we'll skip. Now we find something that's true. It means this, we'll take this part. And because we, uh, we have found a statement that is true, right? We'll skip the entire, uh, the rest of the branches immediately. We'll just skip them. Okay? So the way an if else, else statement selection works is that once it's fine, it's true, it will immediately ignore whatever going on on the bottom, even if there's another true over here. Okay, even if there's another true over here. But then if everything else is false, it will immediately execute the else statement. Is that clear, everyone? Yep. All right. So I think the last question is this one. Nope, that's not the last question. That's still the leaderboard. So what will this return? 30 seconds. All right, uh, one second. All right. Okay, the answer for this is none. Oh, 38% of you got two. Okay, so let's do tracing again. So again, like uh, remember if, uh, if a statement is false, then we'll skip the entire chunk. So in this case, I think we'll try to break this down into parts first. So we have this if else statement over here with one branch over here and no else statement. And then inside that if the first if statement is basically this entire code over here. Now, we evaluate the top part here. And if we evaluate not true, right, it will actually give us false. And because it's false, right, Basically, it will immediately skip the entire code over here. It will not run. Now then, it means this branch will be skipped. And because that's the only branch, that that's the only branch, right? Then it will basically return us nothing. Because there has never been any return statement lah in this function. Nothing will be executed in this part. Is that clear?
Yep. All right, so I guess that's the end of the practice. Does that mean that if it's false, it always keep? Uh, pardon? Sorry, sorry. Uh, what's up, Andy? Does that mean that if it's false, it always keep? Yeah, yeah, it will always skip. As, as I think the this example, where, as this example shows, right? If it's false, right, it will just skip and find another, uh, uh, another branch and just like keep on looking for a true one. But if that like that's the only branch, like that's the only statement that it checks, then yeah, lah, basically everything will be skipped, and nothing right. will happen. But when he say if it's false, because the question is if it's not true, so it will print two instead, right? For the last one. Pardon? Because oh, it, this one, uh? yeah, it will oh. print two instead, correct? Because uh, you're going no. to the first. No, that's not correct. Because here, here, you need to see where does this else belong to. The else here, right, belongs to this if. Yeah, if. because. He say if it's not true, so the first statement if it's false, it will go into the loop first, and because it's not true, it will print else. But but here right, the else right, the else actually belongs to this if else this particular block. If if right, the else is here, right, with the same level of indentation, then it will execute the else here. But this one is not in the same level of indentation. It means that this else does not belong to this one. Yeah, I get it. I mean, like, because the first one, if it's right. not, because it's not true, so it's a false statement. So we go into that loop. Because the statement is still false, so it will print else too, no? Okay. Is it because ultimately Python just wants true? Pardon, pardon, sorry. Python just wants the result to be true, is it? Uh, no, la, Python will just like give us the result, nothing. Ah. If else statement must be true, right? To avoid the execution. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so because it, the first statement we have false already, so we're going to mm -hmm. the loop, so it should print else, right? I'm not so sure with what loop you're talking about. Like, what do you mean by you mean loop? the email statement. You mean the, mm -hmm. the email statement. If not true, you will just jump out, right? Yeah, yeah, you will just jump out. What? So, yeah, if okay. it, so the false statement will start the loop, right, for the second one? I'm not so sure what loop you are ref referring to. I mean, like, I might hear it wrong, lah, but... Yeah, I'm saying, like, because the first statement is not true. So, like, mm. the first criteria, we have not true, and we go yeah. into the second statement. So, because of the not true, it will start to print the else. But... Wait, 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 where is it? But there's no else here. Yeah, I know. If, because yeah. there's no yeah, yeah. else, so, and we fit the criteria to start the second statement, so the second statement will print the two. Am I wrong? So you're saying that it will print two, is it? No, I'm not saying the because oh. of this question, I'm saying another. Oh, my, yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm super sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, la, yeah, so if, yeah, 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 you, the first question is it you're referring to, was it? Because of the other person asked the question, so I got confused. Okay. This one is it? I, I mean, this one, it looks similar. La. Okay, la, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm lost here. I, I'm so, I'm so sorry, guys, but yeah, I'm just so lost here right now. If, where we are. I think like, uh, okay, what we can do is just like, if you guys got any question, like uh, an example, an example of uh, if I'll just send it in the Zoom.
just uh, send it in code share lah, and just like let me know. I know you cannot share it in Zoom lah, because like with Zoom, like the indentation is improper. But then, uh, yeah, I need to move on lah, basically. I need to move on already. So this is like the final, this is the actual question in your tutorial part two. Like, can you actually spot the difference lah? What's the difference between the, these two chunks of code? Just drop your comments or ideas in full EV. The indentation. Yeah, drop it in full EV lah. Yeah. Oh, full EV versus full EV. Uh, it's not starting. Oh, it's, it's in it. Oh, okay. Is it starting now? I think so. Yeah. So yeah, basically, I uh, think, yeah, good points, like, it's basically the indentation, the if else, um, basically, it just looks like, like, where does it belong to? As we can see, this one, basically, uh, goes here, and then this one is here. Well, this one, the branches looks like this, like. So yeah, as it mentioned, like uh, uh the first one prints nothing, second one prints two, eh? Okay, like, I think as most of you got it, like this one will print two and this one will print not uh, will give us nothing lah. I think. Uh, most of you already got it right, so I think uh, now you guys got uh, understand like, like um, it's important to understand like uh, indentation. This is also important for like writing functions or uh, while loop or any loops. Uh, that your indentation must be proper. Just if you guys are confused, like you guys can always draw a line. Uh. You can see in Google Collab over here, right? Like they have like like lines here that you guys can see that helps you understand like which which part of it does it belong to kind of useful uh, sometimes okay there are the lines here anyways um we'll go to the third part of the tutorial which we'll, we'll be talking about for loops right so um okay um Sorry, I'm a bit hungry right now. I can't believe it. Okay, um, there are in lecture you are taught three types of loops, uh, um, which is like uh, number one, uh, you there's a loop that must run exactly n times, then B is run any number of times, and C is run at most n times, which is a definite loop that may break, and then you basically want to check when we say that run at most n times right means that um, usually we want to there's a limit la, of the for loop and usually it can break somewhat in the middle but for example like whether there's a prime number between 10 and 20 something like that like you know for certain that it will only like run 10 times but then it, as long as we find a prime then it can break so for A and C, it means you know the number of n when your loop starts. So when you know the number of n when your loop starts, it is very pref strongly preferable to use a for loop. And for a for loop, right, like, uh, yeah, to be honest, I prefer for loop. Right? I don't really like while loop. Okay, but for B, because it's indefinite, right, we don't, we don't really know the condition of termination. So we use a while loop instead. Uh, okay, explain the three types of loops again. Um, I think I'll explain, uh, we'll explain using examples over here. Like, 
I think the first example here is uh, iterating, iteration version of computing the factorial of n. So if you guys know factorial of n, right, it's like if 5 factorial, it's equals to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So in this case, right, we know for certain that we must run exactly 5 times. We need to multiply 5 times. So say we have a variable. Let's say we have like an x equals to 1. Then basically we need to like x equals to x times 5 x equals to x times 4, x equals to x times 3, until x equals to x times 1, which is exactly 5 times. Now this is the case for A, where you know that you must run exactly n times, regardless of what happens. Okay? The next example is, given a string, A, B, C, D, E, F, compute its length. Now, yeah, la, like technically to compute its length, you can just do like a len A, B, C, D, E, F, technically. But what if you are not given this function? La? You kind of not know like how long this string will be, right? You just like, you need to iterate through the string. So what's going to happen is that you, you need to like keep on counting. La. Is there a character here? Is there a character? 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 So, that is run any number of times or indefinite. I'm so what do you want? Nine at most n times, cause you need to check for now. To be, to be logical, you need to check for any nouns in the end of the loop to like break the loop when it's now. Correct. Correct. But I think when we say C, right? When we say uh, C run at most n times, right? What it actually means is that we kind of know, we, no, not we kind of, we know for exactly like how much, uh, about uh, like how many character, uh, how many times you need to repeat at most. So that's why like my example for for C right for my example is for C like from the numbers ten to twenty right. Is there a prime number? Like for this right, we know for sure like we need to run eleven times uh, if you include ten and twenty. We need to run eleven times, but as long as we find a prime number right, the iteration can break. In reality, right, after you go 10 and then 11, 11 is prime, right? Technically, you can stop at 11 and say like, yes, it is. there is a prime number between 10 and 20. That is the case for C. But for the case of B, right, when you take in the string, you don't know, like, as a computer, right, I, I don't know how long is the length is the string. I just need to keep on checking, like, when will I meet my null? When will I meet my end? So that's the case for like run any number of times or indefinite. It's a bit confusing lah. And to be very honest, you don't need to remember this because like um, this one right, after, after like you work on some problems right, eventually you'll forget about this and you eventually you'll know when to use a for loop. You'll know when to use a while loop. But this is like to ground, pull things to the ground. If you guys are confused, you can always refer to this. Do you know the number of times you need to run? As mentioned here, right, if you know how many times you need to run at, at, at the start of your loop, at the start of your loop, use a for loop. If not, use a while loop. As, uh, as I think Oliver mentioned, like when we check string, right, when we check string, we need to keep on checking whether it's a null or not. That's the function of a while loop. While uh, character is not now. Then you keep on I mean counting. Nine. I mean, nine. cause it's in Python. Mm. So, not yeah now. Lah. Yeah lah. Okay. So with that, uh, we have a exercise, a very simple exercise, um, which is like try to think of an example of each type. It doesn't have to be a Python problem. It can be just a real life problem lah. What is uh, something that we do that must run exactly n times? What is the number of, what is an activity that we just like do indefinitely? We just keep on doing until we stop because of a condition. And what is something that we keep on doing, but we know that if I already accomplished this, I can just stop early. I think I'll just do the code share. Yeah, I can do this. Uh, all right, we'll start with the first one. 
like what is the loops that must run exactly n times in life? You can drop it in core EV. Okay, a uh, two point four kilometer run. Actually, I love that example. I love to use the example of a marathon. Um, in a way, I uh, marathons can arguably be used for like run must must run exactly n times or run any number of times, arguably. So I think for run that uh two point four kilometer run right for n times right, uh, it means that you know that you need to run like keeps on repeating one hundred meter over and over again until two point four. If you like an answer, try to upvote as well. I think the upvote feature is quite fun as well. A repetition set in gym. Good. Any other examples? I know there are like, there's, how many of you in this group? Zoom chat? There's 28 minus me, so 26 of you. Complete assignment to question one to six. Well done. Any more examples, everyone? Seriously, uh, only four examples. Uh. The previous class can come up with more examples. Any more examples of like loops that must run exactly n times? The previous class mentioned about climbing up a uh, climbing up the stairs. That's quite arguable, uh, like climbing up the stairs. Like, if you know the exact number of steps that you need to take to climb up the stairs, then yes, it's a loop that you must run exactly. That must run exactly n times. Every step that you make up the staircase is one iteration. Clock. Okay. I thought clock is something that's just like uh, it just keeps on looping until the battery dies. Okay, then we only have five examples. Okay, we can move on to the next one. Loops that run any number of times or indefinitely. Now, uh, I think Andy mentioned about uh, marathon run. Right? Then I can actually quite argue the same thing. Uh, a run like two point four runs. Sometimes we don't know. As humans, we cannot keep track of. Right? of how many, what's the distance that we have covered and how many times we need to repeat that distance. We cannot uh, keep track of that. So that's why, why we do this is that uh, uh, we can say that running right is a loop that run any number of times indefinitely. Because like sometimes when we run right, we just like keep on running. As long as we haven't crossed the finish line, we just keep on running. That's in, in our head. Rotation of the earth, time, ocean waves, getting prime numbers from a range of numbers. Um, getting prime numbers from a range of numbers, I would argue that's the first one because you kind of look through uh, the range of numbers, say like from 1 to 100. So that's a fixed iteration. And then for each number, right, you check whether it's prime or not. Blinking is indefinite. Attempts to the oh my god, please. I, I feel bad if you if you debug your code indefinitely. But that's a good example that as long as you, you keep on debugging until your code is perfect. Breathing is another good example. I think I'm starting to upload some parts. Breathing, thinking. Any other examples that you guys can think of? Checking for defects for products. Yeah, learning Python. Oh, sure. Learning Python is definitely a lifetime journey. Uh, they now they have they're about to release Python three point nine, so I think I need to learn that as well. All right, I think we have. Troubleshooting, yeah, basically that's debugging. We keep on troubleshooting until all the troubles are gone, although that's almost non-existent. Scratching your head while doing assignment two. Please don't lose your hair yet. Uh. Scratching is okay. I just don't want you guys to pull your hair out yet. Human population increasing. Oh. Well, 
Bill Gates predicted that our human population will peak at a certain point and then like decrease from there onwards. All right, I think we have enough examples for this one. Let's move on to the next one, which is the last one. Is that a loops that run at most n times? So like something that you know, like at at the worst case scenario, you need to run at a certain number, but at, it can die at a certain point. Living. If we do make the assumption that most people live under one hundred, then like you can live, uh, you can die somewhere in between. Then yeah, it's kind of correct. Finding a girlfriend. Um, I don't know why, but the previous class also mentioned about relationship as well. I would argue that finding a girlfriend is an indefinite process. You keep on trying unless you kind of set your own limit. Like, okay, if I find 10 girlfriends and none of them match with me, then I'll be a single. Hey, excuse me. Don't look for my Instagram. Finishing all the pearl in my bubble tea. Yes, that's good. Finding a girlfriend, I would say it's an indefinite process not something that there's no limit in finding a girlfriend ex except that you gave up at a certain point or I know some people would just stop finding for partners after the age of 30. Learning CS1010 e might give up. Don't please. It's an indefinite process. Don't give up. Making babies. Oh actually that's a very good point. Making babies. I know you guys are trying to be maybe you guys are trying to be funny but actually making babies is a good example as some people want to set a limit on the number of babies you want to have, maybe two or three, but then you can stop in between if some one of you become infertile. All right, please don't look for my Instagram. I'm going to downvote that. Please don't stalk me. Don't catfish me. All right. Um, I think we have enough examples for this. Okay, now you guys really understand about the for loops and everything. Well done. Now let's move on to the very last part of the exercise, which I'm going to rush and going to skip some of the activities. So yeah, um, I think the last part is basically called uh, creating burgers. Uh. It's an activity about burgers and I strongly suggest for this part, you code your answers and keep it because it's going to be used in future tutorials. So let's get some real coding, right? Some fast food has food customization, okay? Meaning you can micromanage what will be or will not be your burgers. So for example, this is something that went viral where someone ordered just the goddamn cheese and the cheeseburger. I actually did this in Vivo City McDonald's before where we just tried to buy the patty only. Quite funny. The auntie was very shocked and confused looking at our order. Uh, but for me, as a regular person, I usually, when I go to McDonald's, my special odd request is no pickles, I add extra onion. I don't know what's yours, but yeah, I really hate pickles. I don't think the pickles should how be... Much, uh? Huh? How much do they charge you for a patty only? Same. Uh, same price, oh? Same price. Yeah, they were so confused. Uh. Why would I just buy a patty? <laughs> Same price. So around two bucks, two dollars. Okay, so we're gonna create this uh, imaginary restaurant, uh, which you can actually scroll down to the bottom part of your Google Colab Python notebook, where we have some customization, where bees, where each uh, ingredient is represented by a character. In this case, a bun is represented by B. And then basically a burger is encoded by a string where a simple burger is BVBB, -B -B. a double cheese burger is B bun, veggie, cheese, patty, cheese, patty, bun. And then a Big Mac, as you can see, if, if you just want to list it out, there's the bun here. And then we have the patty, veggie, patty, bun, patty again, cheese, veggie, bun. So that's like bun, patty, veggie, bun, patty, cheese, veggie, bun. Oh, looking good. So, your assignment here is to write a function, burger price, to calculate the price. So, this is the actual, uh, actual price list. So, when we have a function, burger price, BPPB, it will give us 3.2. Okay? 
So we can actually see here. Yeah, la, like if this one is the nice way. I've created a table and you guys can work on here. Now, how to calculate it is basically simply you just add up the prices. La. Now, uh, basically we have 10 more minutes left. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna break you into uh, breakout rooms, small breakout rooms, and basically discuss with your neighbor la, on how to do this. You don't have to write code, but if you do, if you can, feel free to write code immediately in your own IDLE or in your notebook. But if you don't, it's okay. So I'm gonna stop sharing now. I'm gonna split you into breakout groups. And then after that, right, um, basically what I wanna ask you to do is basically, um, Okay. All right, then like, and then I guess I should just like discuss about. There's only like one answer that we can talk about. So oh, there's another one. Thank you, thank you, thank you, kind person. All right, I, I guess my internet is slow lah. Maybe like it didn't show up. Okay, so the first answer is like use a for loop or if loop. In the for loop for each variable, the burger price adds them together. So there's a variable, okay, and then in the if loop is if there is this ingredient, then proceed to add the price into the accumulated price. Good. So I have a variable to so add everything together, and then basically look if the ingredient exists in our in our information, then we just uh, add them to our price. Make the string into a list. Use a for loop for the list, and have an if elif for each alphabet and associated with the price, and then add add them up together in the end. Good, that is also possible. And then use a for loop basically. Actually right, for the second one, you don't really need to create a, a list. You can in fact do a for loop uh, immediately for the string. So let me show you. So, uh, so yeah, uh, basically you see, uh, you will receive a string into your function, right? And then you go, what you want to do is you go through each character of the string one by one. It's like, you know, when you are in fair price in the self checkout counter, you will scan your items one by one and then you'll add it one by one, right? So that's what's going to happen. What happens also, la, like you want to take each character one by one and scan it, scan the price, scan the price, check the price, check the price. And then inside the cash register, it basically accumulates everything. La. And then uh, you output the final price. Now, if you're aware, right, you actually accumulate the price every time you scan. So like after you scan, you add, scan, add, scan, add. So that's gonna, what's going to happen. But then you cannot just like, just like scan everything. You just scan and check the price, right? You need to add everything up. So you'll need to have a variable to contain everything. A variable is just like, if you remember, it's just like a bowl. So you want a bowl where you can actually store things inside. Just like keep on adding things, add, 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 something like that. And then once you're done adding everything up, then you give return the final price as an output. So the variable, right, you need to start with zero. It's unfair if you actually started with another, num another value. So then whenever you want to accumulate, you just need to sum it up. You need a variable to store it. Okay. So this is coming up with this kinds of statements, right? It's actually pretty important. Like coming, uh, because like this is actually the backbone of your code. For those of you who feels that you guys are not so good in coding, this is the first step that you wanna, this is like the first step that you perhaps wanna do when you start coding. It's not starting to type, but actually starting to come up with these kinds of lines of instructions. In fact, this is something that I also do whenever I try to come up a uh, code, uh, solve a coding problem, come up with the step-by-step -step first. And then after coming step-by-step, -step, then you start to code part by part. So it's a good time to start to, to code, but we don't really have the time. So I'll just go through it. So what you want to do here is like the hard part first. Lah. You want to go through the character, each character one by one. This one is the hard part. So what you can do is actually you can uh, picking up from something that we learned from last week's tutorial where you can actually take the, sh the character one by one from a string. You want to iterate through the index one by one. So say this is the burger. 
B, V, C, V. You want to iterate from 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you can get the length of the string using this. Okay. As mentioned, as obvious, this is not our final code. But yeah, we usually write uh, interme intermediate code so that you know like you know that some functionalities work now remember that after you need to take the item one by one right you need to check the price so what you need to do is like whenever you scan a price you need to know what's the actual price of each burger use if right? statement right i use if statement for my for my case yes correct you use an if else statement it's like this ah. okay now the question is how to sum them. Basically, you have a variable in the beginning, lah. A variable in the beginning. This is like uh, your calculator. If you imagine your calculator, lah. It's, it starts from zero, right? And then you just like start adding them up. Or it's like, just like a cash register. Then you return the price over here. Then it should be okay already. Okay. I got a question. Can I put the range? Put directly the land burger directly to the range. I just oh, the sure. If you want to do like range, land, land burger. burger. Yes, yes, yes. I'm doing that. Sure. I really mean. strike. Sure, sure, sure. You are, you are, can can. But in fact, there there's a better way to do that. So I think someone mentioned earlier, right? Converting the string to a list, right? There's actually a better way to do that. So can we do it another way, or is it the, another way? So in lecture we learned that for variable in sequence for D, uh, you can do a for loop in this way, lah, right? And a string is in fact a sequence. Right. String is actually a sequence, lah. So you can immediately like put burger here immediately. So in fact, you can actually uh instead of writing it this way, you can actually write it this way. See the difference? So immediately, you don't need to like take the index out of every string. Immediately, you can insert the burger straight into the code. And basically, what C is will be every character inside the string. Yep. So with this, right, we can actually make adjustments in our new version, which is much sleeker, much more elegant rather than the old, older version. Okay? So, learning points. Not only, about how, not only about how we get the final code, but you need to learn how to plan and write your code in English first. And you kind of need to write some form of intermediate code for a semi-finished product to test out your idea. So, sometimes don't just immediately jump to the end, but maybe like just take a step, step by step. So that you just you just want to make sure that your code works for certain functionality. You don't want to go straight to the end because sometimes right, if you just go jump to the end and your code breaks or produce an error, right, you just like stare and like, why is my code uh, produce an error? And then you just like take a screenshot and send it to me and teacher, why my code doesn't work? Please debug. Build it bit by bit, bit by bit. Don't rush to the end. And then finally, once you get your code working, always think how to improve your code. This is very important because like, it's not just about like making it better, but you are also improving your coding skills for your future coding. Okay. Any questions? I hear someone saying something. Can you go back to the previous slide? Okay, give me a second. Uh, this slide? Yes. All right. So, actually, they look the same. Huh? What's the difference? Is it Basic the length part? Uh, basically, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, la, basically, the difference is, uh, I think, can be here. This is a number, la. it's a range. So like it's basically like zero, one, two, three. And basically instead of instead of burger index, it's uh, it's char. So it's actually uh I mean like maybe you guys uh start for some of you just use Python for like two weeks, three weeks now. But if you have used Python a lot, right? Actually reading this code over here, right, the left part is more intuitive and more easier to understand. 
because uh, yeah. for the left part, right, you cannot see, cannot see like, oh, it means that I'm iterating through the characters inside the string of burger. You just iterate through, and char is basically the objects inside the burger. Well, this one, right, is less intuitive because you you kind of see like, oh, i is a number, then range, length, then I need to check what is length, or I need to check it here, or length is learn burger, and then like I need to see, oh, they're checking, they're indexing, and yeah, you know, it's very long, right? Even you hear my explanation is quite long. That's why the left part over here is more intuitive and easier to read. Oh, just one more question, right? Mm -hmm. Will the smaller case burger produce an error? Uh, in this case, it will. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. Already. Okay. Not error. Actually, sorry. It won't produce an error, but the price will remain zero. Because there's no, it's not, how do you say, uh, it's not assigned to any of the letter in the smaller case burger, correct? Correct. All right. In a way, in a way, right, there's, uh, if you say you want to prove, uh, make your code safe from those kinds of inputs, right? Which I don't think it will be the case, because like for cosmology, for 1010E, right? The input assumptions will be stated clearly, so you do not need to like think any weird scenarios. Lah. So most likely, if the burgers are represented by capital letters, it will the test cases will also be in capital letters. Lah. But say you want a future proof, and the burger is not uh case sensitive you can always like convert the burger into uppercase so that uh, it will immediately convert every any lowercase letters into uppercase lah. hence it, you can still use this chunk of code another way is yeah you can do like f char b or char b this is possible Another possibility is perhaps if char in B, B. There's a million impossibilities here. Actually, with the, talking about this, right? Talking about this, this is why in CS 1010E, right? In coding in general, this is kind of easy to spot people for plagiarism because, like, there's a billion ways to write things and code things. Even with a simple question like this, right? There are many ways to solve this problem. There's this way, this way, this way, and many other ways. That's why for those people who say like, eh, it could be just purely coincidental. We, I don't really believe in coincidences. Lah. So if you try to convince me that it's just coincidental that your code is the same as your friend, try me. That means cosmology, we know, we don't have to put some error detection, right? Like example, people key in the wrong values. We just, Code without the error checking. That mm. means. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah, you can just assume that the input will be good. Lah. You can assume that the input will be okay. But I think, uh, remember the anagram question, right? I think the input there can be quite testy. Okay, anagram question. Oh, yeah, last year they have an anagram question. Lah. Like, basically, you need to check whether two, two strings are anagrams or not. And then that one is quite uh, tricky. Lah. Mm, one more question from me, right? Mm -hmm. It's using a newer version. So mm -hmm. being the uppercase, the, those assigned to the letters will not be detected. But when you type in the BV, PV at the end, will it still produce out the price? It should be. La. Okay. Yeah, can, can I not assign the price to be zero and just assign B, C, P, V the respective amount? That is a possibility. I mean, this is one way. La. This is one way. I mean, yeah, I mean, you sure, sure, you can like... Um, like the, code, the code will be much, much shorter, right? Um, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. How do you do that? How do you do that? Exactly. Like you assign BCPV the respective numbers, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1.5. Yeah, yeah, but how do you assign? Like, how do you exactly assign? Yeah, then that, that's my upcoming question. Uh. So, when you have a sign, after that, then you just print the burger price for those assigned numbers. I mean, you kind of can, lah. but again, like, it begs the question, like, how do you exactly assign in Python? 
I mean, you guys haven't been taught lah, but you kind of can store it in a list. You can kind of store it in a list, so like you kind of input here. But then, right? Correct, okay. Let's not touch the dictionary first. But then, you need to store the this information, right? The price of PC, PV somewhere. Now, how do you store it? In this case, we store this knowledge as an if-else statement. Now, Andy in the Zoom chat mentioned about dictionary, which we will got, we will cover in like the next two or three weeks. We haven't touched that, but once you learn about dictionary, right, your code will be much much shorter. If you have, uh, if you have studied about dictionary before, I don't know either through Kaggle course or on your own learning or anywhere, feel free to use it. But if you do not, if you haven't learned it yet, then like for now, the way we actually assign the prices is using the if else statement. Yes, Chen Wei, you can kind of like assign and mix it faster. But we have, Tan Tan E's materials right now have not covered that part yet. Yet. The keyword here is yet. All right, thank you. Uh, one more question. The burger is actually the location uh, in this case. Pardon? The burger for Shar in burger, the burger is actually the location uh, in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, mm-hmm. So like for char and burger, it will like char will be iterate through B, B, P, and B. Okay. Any other questions? Where I see the chat. Any other questions? Uh, I have one more, but it's regarding the training. The training question for function. Oh. Okay, okay. If the, if if where so if there are no more questions regarding tutorial. Then I'll just close the tutorial, stop the recording, and I can dismiss those who are not asking about tutorial. Okay, people are already leaving already. Okay, if there are no more questions, then uh, thank you for coming. That's the end of this uh, week's tutorial. For those of you who want to ask about training, assignments, or I, I think like uh, earlier, uh, uh, Yang want to ask about uh, assignment as well, feel free to stay and ask me questions. All right, thanks everyone. Thank okay. you. Let me stop recording.